Agora TV. The world is thinking. And so in a way, that's the, that's the equivalent of that old kind of coffeehouse environment that Priestley and, and Franklin spent so much time in. in. In the book, I call those kind of liquid networks. They're environments where there's kind of enough fluidity, people are hanging out, there's kind of a dense network of ideas, different interpretive frameworks are coming together, kind of sharing the space, and it's because of that fluidity, economists have a term, information spillover, that, that happens in those things. The ideas just kind of flow into other people's minds. It's because of that fluidity that interesting things start to happen. And part of the, the implication there is that you want to have people who have diverse points of view and diverse interests and diverse kind of fields of expertise. Um, uh, there was a, a study by a Stanford uh, business school guy who looked at the social network kind of profile of unusually innovative people, not the Twitter, Facebook profiles, but the, you know, their actual social networks of people that they knew. And he compared it to people, these are people who are unusually innovative in kind of corporate environments. And he compared it to people who are unusually non-innovative in corporate environments, which is the part of the experiment you don't want to get asked to participate in. You know, it's like, you seem very, very dull. Can I ask you some questions? Um, and so, so he so he looks at this thing, and what what turns out this very kind of distinct kind of signature pattern that that keeps popping up, which is that unusually innovative people have weak ties in their in their friends and acquaintances to a diverse range of professions. So you are the marketing director of an ad agency, but your friend, you know, one of your friends is an architect, one of your friends is a poet, one of your friends is a government contract lawyer, one of your friends is a plumber. The, the other side of the spectrum are all people who are in marketing and all their friends are in marketing and ad agencies. And it's that kind of borrowing from, from other fields, that kind of unlikely connections that happen, that kind of multidisciplinary space that, get, that you get when you have that kind of social network that, that makes things interesting. This is actually a, a principle from biology, from the kind of history of evolutionary theory from Stephen Jay Gould, which he calls acceptation, where you have a, a kind of a trait that is designed or selected for a certain purpose that turns out to be useful in a totally different field or for a totally different purpose. Feathers originally evolved for thermal protection and warmth. They turn out to be useful for flying. And after that point, natural selection ends up kind of sculpting them for for aerodynamics and not, not so much for, for warmth. This is something Gould always argued this was a major source of innovation in the biological record. It wasn't so much mu mutation, it was this acceptation. And in fact, that's exactly what we see in the history of technology. There, the history of technology is replete with technologies that were designed for one thing that turned out to have this crazy unanticipated use in another field. Gutenberg, great story, had done all this amazing work with movable type, had built you know, these amazing typefaces, and had worked with inks to kind of get the work on the page, but he didn't actually have a kind of a pressing mechanism that worked to his satisfaction. And so he decided to, it was kind of wine harvesting season, and so he goes up into the hills in Rhineland, Germany, and, and <laughs> drinks a lot of wine, which is also a way to innovate. And he, he's sitting there, and he looks over, and he sees this ancient technology of the screw press, and he says, wait a second, that's what I've been missing. This is a giant thing for pressing grapes, but he thinks, I could take that. And so he borrows this very old machine, kind of ports it over, rejiggers it a little bit, and takes something designed to press grapes and uses it to print Bibles and changes the world. That is again and again and again the story of, of how innovation happens.